Hey everybody, James here, and once again I'm going to have to apologize for the noise because my printers are continuing to run. And because they've been running 24-7, I've been having to stock up on filament, which is admittedly getting a little scarce. So I ordered some rolls of this Econofill by filaments.ca. Now this is PETG, and one of the things you're going to notice right off the bat is that this is a refill, so it doesn't actually come on a spindle. What's that mean? Well, it means, first of all, this is less than $20 Canadian, and it means that there's far less packaging. The box itself is probably 20 to 30% smaller than a traditional roll of filament, and uh, it still comes packed, uh, you know, in a vacuum-sealed bag, um, but there's far less material around it. So the way this works is it works with the master spool. So this master spool here comes apart into two pieces, so we'll just go ahead and spin off the top part. And what you'll notice is on it there are four notches and coincidentally there are four cable ties. So I've gone ahead and rotated the cable ties so that they're pointing out so that they won't obstruct when we try to reassemble this. And essentially what you're going to do is line up your cable ties with those notches. It'll slide down there no problem and then we'll go ahead and tighten this back down onto it. Once we've got that tightened down we can go ahead and snap our cable ties. Now the one thing you'll want to watch is that your filament still has an end obviously so you're probably going to want to take that before you get started and you're going to want to lock it into place like you would with any other roll of filament. You don't want to end up with a tangle because you started cutting prematurely and the end got away on you. So with it locked into place we'll just snip our cable ties and pull them out. Now you have a roll of filament that's cost you less money, has used less materials, and I think this is really useful, especially for colors that you're going to use a bunch of. Obviously, if you've got like 50 different colors, you don't want to have to have 50 master spools, especially for stuff you don't use that often. Um, each roll comes with a sticker that tells you what it is, so 1.75 millimeter PETG, a uh, nozzle temperature between 200 and 240, and a bed temperature between 75 and 85. So you essentially just peel that off, stick it onto the master spool wherever you want to put it, and you have a roll of filament ready to go. And the best part is, once it runs out, you just unscrew it, pull out the cardboard insert, put your new one on, and you're ready to go. Now, as a quick comparison, here is the injection molded master spool I got from filaments.ca about a year or two ago. Um, I actually like the 3D printed design a lot better. I don't know if this is still the design that they're selling. This is what I had on hand, um, but it does show that it has come a long way. So this system works pretty much the same as the other one. The, the holding together mechanism is different. Uh, it's got these thumb screws that you can just unscrew. And I've used up the roll of black PETG that was on here, so we'll go ahead and take that off. Again, you line up the cable ties with the notches, slide it down to place. And the one thing I've noticed, and I don't know if their design has changed or you're just supposed to put a lot of pressure on those. I don't remember it being particularly difficult, but I really have to sort of push down on it to get these to be able to thread even a little bit. Um, the cardboard looks like it's about the same thickness, but it kind of looks like the PETG bulges out a little bit around it. Um, but overall, the process is the same. Now, the reason I like the 3D printed one better primarily is because of these. Not because they're difficult to screw in with a fresh roll on here, but one of the snags I was running into is when I was printing with this one here, um, often these would end up hooking sort of the side of the spool holder or whatever, and in a best case scenario, it would sort of just shift around a little bit. Uh, in a not so great scenario, it would actually work its way off of the spool holder and I'd come down and I'd find it just sort of sitting on the ground and, you know, hopefully still sort of spinning. Uh, and then in a worst case scenario, it would actually get stuck up on there and it would jam and I'd end up with a failed print. So I ended up liking the 3D printed one a lot better, but, uh, you know, this is one of the other options that's out there. Once you've cut your cable ties, you're also going to want to go around and dust off the side of the rolls. What happened in my case is as I was cutting the cable ties, there was particular that came off the cardboard and ended up on the roll. You don't want this getting up into your uh, extruder or your hot end and ending, ending up causing a jam. So I've been printing a little bit of this and it seems to print really, really smooth. It's a nice economy line of filament, hence the Econofill. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to give you guys a quick overview. Um, the actual print of the uh, master spool was about 100 grams of material, I think. Um, and, uh, you know, it printed on a 200 by 200 bed with absolutely no problems. So it's, uh, it's definitely a good option. Alrighty, guys. Well, hopefully you enjoyed the look at this. There will be more content coming eventually, I promise, once we're past the current crisis. Alrighty, well, until then, stay safe and stay creative.